Hey guys, how you doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm wearing my work shirt. Uh, Pat and I were getting ready to go to work today. And we got there. And they had some complications going on. We actually weren't needed. So we were allowed to come home without any points or other contingencies. So we thought I'd take advantage of the time and get back to work on a Springer bike a little bit. And... Thanks guys for giving me all your input on what you thought I might be best. And uh, you Dizzy 1969 even went out of his way to make a video about how his Baja mini bike frames are constructed as far as the neck gussets go. And pointed out a few things to me and I really appreciate that man. Thanks a lot Dave. Uh, so I've come out here to the shop. I cut a big piece of this poster board and I held it up there and I marked off the back and took some scissors and cut it out and came up with this template. Which I then transferred over to this eighth inch, eighth inch plate and cut out a couple pieces that are roughly the size that I want. Let me show you the plate I'm using. There you can see it there. I, uh, I've been whittling on that a lot. Here's some of the, this is what was hanging off the end of it, just from all the different little pieces I've cut out of this in the past, building this bike. I went ahead and cut this piece off just to get it out of my way. Kind of square things up before I started. And what I have left is what you see there now. So anyway, he was absolutely correct. He said, his has a bend in it. He said, his has a bend in it. Actually, it'll go like this. And uh, there's a bend in it in one spot or another to where it'll meet on all three sides of the frame. On the backbone, the down tubes, and the headstock itself. And uh, I'm going to have to do that. In order to do that, I'm going to have to figure out where I want it to bend, take it in there to the vise, probably heat it up, because this is 8 inch thick. This is... This is substantial, and uh, and then bend it, and then fit it, and probably have to do it a couple times to get it right. But I don't know if I have time to do all that today or not. It's uh, overcast. It's late in the evening already. So I'm gonna work on that, and uh, just let me show you what I got so far, though. Let me hold it up there and show you. All right, there's a shot of the headstock. I'm going to leave this piece here. I've already got it tacked in there. I'm going to go ahead and full weld that in there. Put some good long, inch long welds around it. Make sure it stays. Just it won't hurt anything. I have to grind these other boogery welds down and touch them up as somebody else suggested. And then clean the paint off and stuff. But this, I'm just showing you this to see the fit. You can't really see from there, but there's a big gap right here. It's because it's not it's not bent right. If I fold it over to where that touches all the way around, there's a big gap here. So I think I'm going to like it better if this is straight and this is straight and the bend is actually down here, which means I'll have to bend this bottom part outwards a little bit. And it's probably going to be tricky to figure out exactly how I want to bend that. I know if I start welding it on there and then try to bend it, it ain't going to happen. It's just too thick a metal. I won't be able to bend that without pounding on it with a hammer, I'm sure. And I don't want to be pounding on the bike to do that. I like the way that looks right there. Anyway, i got to sort that out. And, uh... As far as this just being straight right here, I don't know. I may do something. I may put a little curve or something in there before I'm done, but first I gotta get it to where it fits in there nice. So more on that as it develops. 
I started with a brand new cutoff wheel, four and a half inches, and just cutting those two pieces out, along with cutting that end piece off, left me with that. <laughs> yeah. It's some tough going. I'm about ready to take my flap wheel and go around those two pieces, sandwich them together, and go around all the edges and smooth out the imperfections and make sure they're smooth and where I can handle them without getting any burrs. But this little something on my mind I want to share with you guys while you're here. And uh, we stopped at the market on our way home. We needed a couple things. And talking about milk. We like a good whole, not 2%, you know, not skim or low fat or anything, just a good whole milk is what we like to drink and to put in our coffee and for our cereal and different things like that, cooking, whatever. Well, Highland is the brand that they used, used to carry. Now, mind you, this is Walmart. It's the small rural town. Everybody shops at Walmart because the only other choice you have is a thing that's like Aldi's or Alps, always low discount prices, but they don't always carry what you want. So, and you gotta be careful there too because you don't always save money there. You gotta watch yourself. So anyway, we go to Walmart. That way we know we can get everything that we're gonna want. And here lately, they haven't been carrying that Highland milk. They've been carrying these off-brand names that I've never heard of before. And well, the milk just doesn't taste good. It tastes like it has whey mixed in with it, whey fat. And uh, so we've tried all the different brands that they've got. This has been going on for a little while now. There is one brand that they carry that doesn't have that, but they only carry it in quarts. And so we asked them about it. We said, you know, what's up? How can we not carry the Highland dairy products anymore? Oh, they say, oh, well, Highland moved. They're no longer in this area. Oh, okay. Well, I used to be in the dairy industry, and I know a little bit about this stuff. I don't know a lot, but I know a little bit. And I do know that there's a Highland Dairy in Springfield, Missouri, which is about a two-hour drive from here. And two, two and a half hour drive from here. And I've seen their trucks on the road up here before. And I know that's where they were getting their milk from. Well, I looked them up on the internet. And Highland Dairy has not moved. They are still there. And uh, I was also researching and found that they Highland Dairy also makes red diamond iced teas that you can buy in the uh, gallon jugs. Well, while we were at Walmart today, I looked to see if they had any. And sure enough, they had the red diamond iced tea. They're just not carrying their milk products. So, <laughs> we're a little put out. We think they're lying to us. And uh, I think it's probably a matter of money. They probably get this other milk cheaper and can sell it for the same price and make more money. But I think we're going to have to call somebody's bluff on that deal and get them to snap too because, you know, we don't like that kind. All right. Anyway, I'm going to get back to work. I just want to get that off my chest and share that with you. And uh, I'll let you see how this thing progresses as it progresses. I may run out of light before I get too much more done. I gotta get busy. I'll see you guys.